Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, also Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, going to be examining this book today. And uh, you're going to, oh, wow, we're going to really turn this one on its head. Uh, well, no pun intended there. Speaking about the seven heads, uh, the ten horns there of the beast himself. But I'm going to present some thoughts for you and more of a conjecture. It's not, uh, or maybe I shouldn't even say conjecture. Maybe I should say an observation that I've made. And as I begin to look at this chapter, I have really begun to look at this in a completely different way. Uh, excluding the part of the mark of the beast. Now, I know there's a lot of debate right now going on about the mark of the beast. A lot of people are associating that with the mandate that the world has placed on people. They have to get this uh, thing placed in their arms, put in their bodies, which we are 100% against. But yet you got people out there that are just, oh gosh, I, I don't know, maybe it just makes them feel fuzzy inside to say, Oh, Stephen and Jan, are they, they, they don't say that like we say it. They don't believe our doctrine, and so therefore they're encouraging people to follow the mandate. Nothing can be further from the truth. Um, completely. Well, I guess that's the biggest fake news I've heard since I started the ministry. But anyway, uh, but I, underst I understand. Seriously, I do understand the passion why people may believe this and um and i can i can certainly uh respect that because something so serious as the mark of the beast is nothing to be taken lightly uh, and i know uh the the brother that actually began this doctrine um i've always had a great respect for him and uh but I just clearly have to say I disagree with it. And if anything, I would have to argue the opposite when it comes to what this is doing to the body of Christ because there are many people that took this uh, mandate into their arms uh, that were believers, that had no clue uh, and, and we might even argue there was no, there were the teaching of this doctrine had not yet evolved. And so therefore they're just automatically marked, cursed, gone to hell. And even if I argue the issue of, you know, a child or like in Australia and some other countries where they forcibly place us into people, uh, I get people write me and they say, oh, they're, they're exempt. Wow, that's interesting. According to the book of Revelation, if you receive that mark, there is no exemption process for you. So there again, that's just apologetics, like we have so many apologetics, uh, people who write apologetics on biblical scripture because it really doesn't make sense in some cases. And so they just have to make up some kind of story to make that doctrine sound good. I think the Bible can stand on its own. It doesn't need anybody to make up a story. But at any rate, I, I, I want to present some thoughts for you, and I, I would have to call this more an observation, not even a conjecture. We could say it's a conjecture, but uh, observations that I've been making on Revelation 13. Uh, and it might also help uh, in, in this process of teaching this. It might help uh, some of you that are listening and are concerned about uh, this issue of, is this mandate that's going around the world the mark of the beast or not? Uh, I, I think it would really help to, uh, to understand that because it's kind of like having the cart before the horse, you know. Everybody wants to put the mandate now. The mark of the beast is here already now. And yet <laughs> it comes to uh, the beast and the rising and the image into the beast. None of these things are here yet. And, and granted, maybe that's all been explained away in, in the uh, doctrine that's, that's being perpetrated around the world. I'm going to try not to bump uh, anything on my on my um, mouse pad here because I have electric, a lot of electrical charge in my body, I always have, and I don't have to actually touch that pad. It'll just work on its own for me because of the charges in me. 
Let's take a look at this. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw the beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horn ten crowns, upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now, if you notice, I have on here, rise up out of the sea. Let's keep our mind on where that beast comes from. And the beast which I saw, verse 2, was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Okay. That's Satan. Satan gives him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and the world wondered after the beast. All right? The world wondered after the beast. Now, I found that also interesting. We know that he has a deadly wound, but that wound was healed. So let's keep that one in mind as well. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now, this one is very important. And I can tell you from even teachings I've done in the past, I have had a field day with it. I've placed the Catholic Church in that position, uh, you know, Who's able to make war with the Vatican? But yet Israel is fully planning on making sure she's at the bottom of the ocean. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given to him to continue forty and two months. So everybody's trying to figure out this time frame. Any type of UN agreement that comes along or anything else that comes along and the first thing you know people are automatically oh, 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 oh you know you know what this is it this is it and many times it's just not the case so I have to make sure we're plugged in I don't think I'm plugged in give me one second I uh, I realized I didn't have the computer plugged in I'm seeing the battery getting low so just make sure we cover that aspect all right, we'll continue on. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. We're going to really look at that a little closer too. And I beheld, here's the important, verse 11. I beheld another beast... Coming up, notice the verbiage, out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Interesting. And he doeth great wonder, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is the wisdom. Let him that understandeth count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. Right. So if you have wisdom, the number of the beast is 666, from what I understand all this here. Now, there's some key factors here that a lot of times we're overlooking. 
And this is, like I said, complete conjecture. It is an observation. It's things that I have learned from working years of Intel. And things that those of you that watch our Patreon Israeli News Live broadcast there, we've done a lot of disclosure work over there um, about the extraterrestrials that the government works with. And some people don't like to hear that. Fallen angels is what they are. And, and, and let's just remember, let's remember what Jesus said. I think this is so invaluable. And then we tend to just totally forget his own words that he says in Matthew 24, which should be obvious, Matthew 24 being fulfilled already, wars in divers places, earthquakes, pestilence, you name it, everything that Jesus talks about has already been going on, right? But then he gives this ominous thing, starting in the verse 35, and he says that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But at that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. I've kind of wondered if that's not the fallen angels that he's speaking about when he says the angels of heaven, because it doesn't, doesn't have to imply the angels that are with the true heavenly Father. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now the eating and drinking and giving and giving in marriage were the fallen angels cohabitating with women, producing Nephilim children. That continues to happen on the earth until this day. Case in point, let's just make sure that we remember what we're talking about here because according to the scripture, and you don't have it in English translated properly, so we will take a peek at this real quick in Numbers chapter 13. Make sure we get on Numbers 13 before I go any further because it takes a little time for computer to work here where I'm at. And there we saw the Nephilim so what's written in Hebrew right there? So, because I know some people say, "Oh, it doesn't." It says giants. It doesn't say nephilim. No, it says nephilim. Okay, right there, right there in the dark blue that I've highlighted for you now. Nephilim, Bnei Anak, the sons of Anak, Minha Nephilim. They're from the fallen ones. Now they put Nephilim in English, our transliteration over here. That's incorrect. Vowel placement is incorrect. Moses didn't misspell what he wrote. He let you know that Enoch was from the fallen angels. This is after the Nandiluvian destruction, after the flood. And we have the giants in the land. Case in point, again, let's take and look at Jude. Peter also brings this out, but... We use mainly Jude because it's a little bit faster and easier to get to Jude than it is uh, on other cases. And then it's just, uh, well, I say it's faster. <laughs> Maybe I'll prove myself wrong here, right? For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. In the days of Jesus, they crept into the church unaware. They're ordained to condemnation. Only the Nephilim were ordained to condemnation. Ungodly men. Turn our grace for our God into lasciviousness, denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll therefore put in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. Believed not. That were, those were hybrid children, Nephilim. And the angels which kept not what? Their first estate. He's bringing into remembrance. Who what? These ones that crept in unaware. 
right? That's the ones that crept in unaware. He's letting you know that they are fallen angels. That's all the way down to the time of Jesus. And then Jesus tells you at the return, when he was getting ready to return, you'd see this repeat again. So fallen angels, book of Revelation. Wow. Interesting, isn't it? And then fallen angels is kind of like, if you look at it like this, Satan, who is the serpent in Genesis, he's also referred to as Leviathan. We have him in, for example, let's take Psalm 74. Yet God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You did break the sea in pieces by your strength. You did shatter the heads, plural. See, there it is. Roche, not Roche. Roche. Tananim al Hamaim. You did shatter the heads of the sea monster in the waters. You did crush the heads, plural again, Roche, Leviathan. There it is. Leviathan has multiple heads. You did cleave fountain and brook. You dried up overflowing rivers. Do you know what he's saying in verse 15? He's the same God that parted the Red Sea. He's the same God that for Joshua parted the Jordan River. And the same God that did that is the same God that crushed the head of Leviathan. Now, what's interesting is even in <laughs> Psalm 74, that word really is like a wound. Didn't mean he died. Now, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. All right, let me back up. I got to back up again. I know I'm going to lose you if I don't. Psalm 74. Why did I mention verse 15? You did cleave fountain and brook, and you dried up ever flowing rivers. It's a time frame. God is showing you when Leviathan's head was wounded. It was at Moses' time, it was in Egypt. That's when he did it. Now, isn't it interesting? Ra, it's actually pronounced ray according to this here. Ray represents sunlight, warmth, and growth, right? But anyway, the, the, the god of Egypt, Ra, was usually depicted in human form. He had a falcon head, which was crowned with a sun disk. This sun disk was encircled by a sacred cobra named uh, Uraeus. Ra has also been depicted as a man with the head of a beetle, also a human with the head of a ram. The ancients also depicted Ra with full species from such as a serpent, heron, bull, lion, cat, ram, hawk, beetle, phoenix, and others. His main symbol, however, is the sun disk. They also have depicted an alien with a gill face. Why gill face? All right. Let's pause just for a minute. I got to pull that picture up, and I don't think I have it on this computer. Let's just pause for a second. Here's that, uh, the photo that was sent to me of this fallen angel, this alien being. A little bit of a conehead shape as well, but notice the gill-looking face there. Now, what's ironic what was told to me is that that type of being, that alien being, that is in communication not only with our government, and it's not like the president or somebody like that. These are people that are um, specialized in dealing with these type of entities. And they're also in uh, uh, negotiations with the United Nations. They are one of the two species that are planning on taking over this planet. 
and their plans have been in the making for a long time. They live in the oceans of our world, and they're coming up. It's interesting, too, depicted to the right, the pharaoh that is there appears to be, uh, 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 not, uh, what, is, what is his name now? I forget the name of this one. I believe he's the one that actually brought in the one god worship, uh, Atanakin or something like that. He's also believed to be the pharaoh that was there during the time of Moses. But this creature here, in the different meetings I've been in, has been disclosed that he is representing, he is second in command, he represents the god of Ra or is the god of Ra, the Egyptian sun god. And he's not dead. And claims to be that he's been there, he's still alive since the days of Egypt. Now, you couple that with the fact the scripture says here, that what? Let's, let's get to the right one here, sorry. I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns, ten crowns. Now, as I mentioned to you, Ra is also depicted as a serpent. What do the crowns represent, things of that nature? I, I, I can't say. Like I said, I'm only sharing with you some thoughts from observation that I've made on this. So, now, one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and the world wondered after the beast. As I've mentioned to you in Psalm 74, the head of Leviathan was crushed or wounded, and you did cleave you did cleave the fountain and brook, and thou dried up the, the flowing rivers. As I said, Psalm 74 shows that the, the, the wounding of the head of Leviathan could have easily been at the time of Moses. I also look at the fact that when Jesus was on the earth, he also clearly, as he expose the Pharisees and maybe we'll go back to that one real quick he exposes the Pharisees to who they really are in Psalm 23 uh, he also speaks about how that they are the children of those that killed the prophets and, uh, and let's see here we go right here and he said that they're serpents generation of vipers literally in the hebrew genealogy or family of vipers and we could argue that jesus and i've taught this before that he wounded because literally the scripture of the wounding of the head of the serpent would be by the woman's seed and that was christ christ is the one that actually gave the real fatal blow Because up until the time of Christ, we had not gotten rid of the serpent. And we know that the mingling of the seed had continued on. In fact, if you look, for example, here at Revelation 17. Let me just share this with you real quick, right? And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials talked to me saying, unto me come here i will show unto you the, the judgment of the great whore that sits on many waters <laughs> that's another interesting right she sits on many waters mm. with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication normally we look at the, the waters as representing peoples but in the case of the fact that we know the beast comes out of the sea, and we know that there is a mingling of this genetically mingling with the fallen angels, again, as Jesus said it would be in this last day, 
maybe there's a different meaning in this altogether as well. The hybrid children, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, right? So he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness. I saw the woman sitting upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Well, that's exactly Revelation 13. And the woman was arrayed in purple, scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. Upon her forehead was written, was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Mystery Babylon. Why Mystery Babylon? Well, that should be the most obvious scripture of all, Ezra. When the children of Israel were still in Babylonian captivity, we find out the princes drew near unto me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands, doing according to their abominations. He wasn't talking about Babylonians. Babylonians not even mentioned. The Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. Wow, the Egyptians are there too. Isn't that astonishing? What do all these nations have in common? They were the ones dwelling with the children of Israel when Israel came and overthrew the inhabitants of the land. Remember Joshua, he overthrows it. Uh, I believe that's either in Numbers 18 or, or something like that. That we read this story there, they overthrow, they, 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 they get rid of the inhabitants of the land, or at least we find out that's the inhabitants of the land from the, from the spies that go down there. And those peoples there, the Canaanites, Ammonites, Moabites, etc., had already mingled their seed with the fallen angels and created giants in the land. Wow, how'd the giants get here? I thought that only happened before the flood. Well, I, I, let's, let's wake up. Verse 2, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves, for their sons, so that the Holy Seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. Read that in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. They actually had children by hybrid Nephilim to begin with. Yea, the hand of who? Princes and rulers have been first in this faithlessness. Let me, let's highlight that separately. All right, let me say, let me tell you why. Because according to Revelation, and upon her forehead was written the name, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. But who were the ones that were guilty that we read, right? Kings of the earth have committed fornication. The inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication princes, the rulers. Okay? And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, with the, with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Why do they ever try to apply this? I mean, I, I, I admit, I, I'm guilty. I applied it to the Catholic Church many, many, many times. And, and, and it doesn't exonerate the Vatican from all the evils that they do either, by no means. But I will tell you this. I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. The woman, Mystery Babylon, you already found out she's the mother of harlots. Why? Because of the mingling of the seed over in the book of Ezra back in Babylon, as the scripture says she did. Now she's drunken with the blood of the saints. Absolutely, Jesus Christ murdered, crucified, killed by what? The Pharisees. Pilate said to them, what shall I do with, the, with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, let him be crucified. That's Matthew chapter 27, by the way. And the governor said, why, what evil has he done? But they cried out the more saying, let him be crucified. And when Pilate saw he could prevail nothing, but that rather atonement was made, and he took water, washed his hand before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. We already know the story. The Pharisees were convincing the, the, the other tribes and stuff to cry out for the blood of Jesus. And not just Jesus, because it says saints, plural. They killed James. They killed all the apostles one by one. Every one of them killed. Stephen was killed. You name it, they were all killed. 
So not only did Moses wound the head of the serpent, but also Jesus wounded the head of the serpent. And truly it was Jesus that we read about from the prophecy of Revelation, excuse me, Genesis, where the woman, he says, he shall, uh, he's speaking about the coming of the Messiah, that he would bruise or wound the head of the serpent. He would, he would, he would uh, bruise his heel, but he would, he would wound the head of the serpent. And then we had some peace from that devil for a while. And they've been living in the oceans ever since then. But that deadly wound is healed, and now they're coming out. All right, so let's go back to Revelation 13. And, and by the way, this is why I argue, too, about this mandate not being the mark of the beast. You, haven't, you have to have the this, 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 this steps to be processed. You can't get the mandate, cannot be the mark of the beast, before this agreement is being made. And by the way, the agreement is, we're, we're supposed to, next year, they're going to <clears throat> tell you that, or do a disclosure that we've been in contact with extraterrestrials. They're supposed to use the Nordics as the main ones to begin with, because they look human. The ones that are coming out of the ocean, as you see, clearly do not look human. Right? They don't look human. But the Nordics do. They figure it's more palatable. And the Nordics live in the inner earth. I guess I don't go over too good with flat earth people, but maybe it would because you don't have to have a... You can do it any way you want to figure that one out. They still have a place in there where they can get inside, right? So maybe that'll help you. All right? So that beast comes out of the sea, as we saw already. Let's move further down. Who is able to make war with him? I said I wanted to come back to that. Everybody argues, they might say well, nobody can make war with Israel, nobody can make war with the Vatican, but yet they, they make war with Israel all the time. But one thing unanimously, hands down, no nation, no general, no, no one that knows anything about alien technology, they will tell you, we have no way to defeat them. I hear this in meeting after meeting after meeting. Their technology is so advanced. There's no way we could ever win. And even yet, we have gotten technology from them. We still have no ability to defeat them. And in fact, if anything, they have been working with our governments to create all these robotic soldiers, which they have you know, more than a million of these things, to come out and kill us, eventually. Goes on, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. So world governments are in negotiations with these beings, and all they really want to do is turn you into slaves. Isn't that what happened in Egypt? Isn't that what the pharaohs were doing? Not only did they enslave the Jews, they were enslaving other nations as well. Yeah, that's what they were doing. Enslavement and depopulation agenda. Isn't that what they did in, in Egypt as well? Isn't, wasn't it the fact that Pharaoh ordered all the firstborn of the Israelites to be killed because he was afraid there was too many of them? And if there's too many, they might overthrow us? And by the way, even though these governments say that we can't defeat them, who is able to make war with him, I've been told many, many times, you're more powerful than you realize you could overcome. If the world's human population ever truly woke up, you could defeat them. But the problem is they know the people won't wake up. They control the media. They control politics. They control churches. Yeah. The Vatican is the biggest intermediate organization with extraterrestrial fallen angel life on the planet. You'll learn this over on Patreon at Israeli News Live. On Patreon, we talk about these things. There was given to him a mouth speaking great things. Blasphemy power was given to him 42 months. We read that already, right? He opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. Do you know this is what the, the issues are about right now? I've been made uh, a part of the information that, is, that they, they speak to the officials here and the religious overtones and 
their plans, what they're going to use to even deceive the very elect. They're coming to say they are your creators. And of course, Ra is supposedly the guy that, just like the story of the Bible, he's the one God, not a multiple gods, and he created everything. The stories are almost duplicate. That's fascinating. But he ended up getting wounded and being driven out of Egypt. They're going to say they left earth. They put everything in great order. We were supposed to be able to live in peace, no problems, and they come back and find everything in a mess. That's one of their narratives. They're going to tell you they sent Jesus. They're going to tell you about what happened. They're also going to tell you that uh, it wasn't Satan that killed, the, killed Jesus because they say that Satan knew the Bible better than you do, and therefore he knows that Jesus would be coming. He would never be a part of his death. But yet, as I sent back to the team, I told them, I said, you failed to realize Satan didn't know that Jesus truly was the Messiah because he said when he was tempting him in the wilderness, if thou be the son of God, turn the stones into bread. If thou be the son of God, you have power. As the scripture says, though you dash your foot against the stone, the angels are there to bear thee up. Throw yourself down. Prove to me your God. See, Satan didn't know for sure who he was. So their argument is moot, in my book anyway. But they're going, he's given a mouth. And the reason why he blasphemes God is because he'll claim to be God. That's what Ra claims to be. He's coming back and his deadly wound is healed. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. Just like in the days of Jesus, they came against the saints. They're going to do it again. The true believers, they're going to try to crush. And what's sad is the evangelical community and messianic communities are all pushing that Israel is the great beacon on the hill over here. And, and the messianic community, like Shapira, goes out and tells the people, you need to be under the rabbis. But yet recently, he's sitting there bashing uh, Yosef Misachi, the uh, Jewish rabbi out of New York. And I'm thinking to myself when I listen to it, it's not, a, I mean, I appreciate that he, he was trying to put Rabbi Misrachi in his place, but the funny thing is, is he just got through telling the world back uh, two years ago that you need to be under the rabbis and submissive to them until the Messiah comes. Jesus already come, Yitzhak Shapira. He already come. And he already put them in their place. And no, we don't need to be under the law. He come to deliver you from this. So they make war with the saints, overcome them. And all that dwell on the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. I find that interesting as well because... That's exactly what happened back in Egypt. Pharaoh ordered the deaths of all the Israeli children, and then later God comes down in a war with Moses against Pharaoh and, and Ra, you might say. Uh, he kills all his firstborn as well. So that took out a lot of Nephilim children, didn't it? Hmm, wow, what do you know? And I beheld another beast. Here, is the, here comes the other part. Coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, I have a conjecture about this one as well. The other entities that are wanting to take over the earth, as I said, live in the earth as well. Whether it be the reptilians or the Nordics, I don't know which one it's going to be, but the reptilians want to control this world as well. So it may be the reptilians. And I think the timing of them coming out of the earth and out of the ocean has to do with the heating up the core of the earth and the heating up of the oceans because of the volcanic activity. They're not going to be able to stay down there no way. So they have to move forward with their plans. Just like the mandate, as I disclosed to you guys uh, already, this was this mandate, the very thing that they put in your arm has been worked on since World War II. They needed a way to be able to interface. They needed a way to be able to suppress your DNA or your, excuse me, your immune system. And so they developed a, a um, DNA regenerator and they're injecting you a live virus called black goo. 
That's what they're doing. And he exercised. So the beast comes out of the earth. That my conjecture could also be is it Nimrod who was buried in the earth. That's a possibility. I don't know the answer to it. He exercised all the power of the first beast before him. Caused the earth and them that, uh, which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So I believe they're going to, he's going to get you to go and fall for this alien being, Ra. And they're probably going to tell you it's Yahweh or something. I, I don't know exactly which way they're going to go in this. But he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. You would not believe some of the technology and the miracles that these fallen angels, these aliens are capable of, including reading, your, knowing your thoughts of your own mind. <clears throat> uh, I mean, you'd be surprised at the technology. Yeah, they can make fire come down out of heaven. They can do that as well. I've been told many, many stories about the different miracles and things that they're capable of doing. And people will just fall for it. And Israel, by the way, is going to be the seat where they do this from. This is why there's such a big push. And this is why I'm very concerned about the Christian community, like the evangelical world, right? This here, what do evangelicals want with Israel? A new documentary goes looking for answers. Now, I don't, I'm not saying the documentary is accurate, good, or whatever. I've not, not seen it. But what's interesting in here is the support that Israel gets that, the, that, that is brought out through this. And uh, one case in point in blue here, there are clear demographics in this case. The generous estimates of Jews in the world are under 20 million, whereas in the, the not-so-generous estimates of evangelical Christians, it is 600 million and growing. There's more support by evangelical Christians going into Israel than there is from the Jewish uh, community. In the millions, millions. Uh, let me read this one part here for you as well. I think this is important for you to know this part here. So let's, let's, let's look at this one here. Today it is really colored as something that you cannot argue with because only if you're against Israel will you turn down support for Israel. But I do not think you really need to look into this relationship because many of the things communities are pushing for are considered by many Israelis as the opposite of support. I'll give you an example. When the American Christian Organization, Christians United for Israel, visits Washington, in the film you see 5,000 evangelicals teach what they should say to their representatives in, Cap uh, in Capitol Hill and ask them basically to push then-President Trump to cut aid to the Palestinians. In that moment, as an Israeli, I'm standing there listening to that and knowing that the security community of the state of Israel is extremely against cutting the aid because the security community of the state of Israel knows what it means to have humanitarian crisis on our borders. Wait a minute, is this support of Israel or is it actually promoting a very specific agenda which is quite an extreme right-wing agenda about this place? Basically what happened is that yes, Trump did cut the support to the Palestinians, therefore the Palestinians didn't have a way to be able to pay their, their police to be able to keep things in check on that side and it caused a catastrophe for the Jews on the opposite side. That's one of their arguments, right? All right, and then, you know, different arguments can be made. I'm not going to get into the arguments there, but the point is the growing evangelical messianic movement that has lifted Israel to such a status, godlike status, uh, on the earth there, and the people saying that the law is going to come out of Israel, and they're all putting that prophecy in the future when Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of that law. And then you're going to take and you're going to lead the people right in to an Antichrist system. And by the way, President Trump just came out publicly and said, too, he would have done a better job than Biden if he were president. The people would have followed him right into taking the mandate. One of his greatest supporters that I know personally that not only supported him, but also advisor to him, said if he got back in, he'd be fearful now because of his close connection with the extraterrestrials. 
his warm embrace of them. And he said, because the people trust him wholeheartedly, they would follow him right into that trap. And he knows what's going on. He knows that these demons are coming to take over this earth. Remember the scripture. You know, you say that, oh, that can't be. Oh, oh there's no such thing as aliens. A aliens, devils, demons, okay? Nephilim. Fallen ones, Nephilim. However you want to put it, whichever way you want to look at it. They're coming. And the scripture says that Satan knows what he has but a little time. When he's done what? He's let loose. His angels are let loose. Remember I did that teaching a little about a year ago about Gog and Magog? And I told you, I said, it's not what you think it is. We're on, it's on this side of the, of, of the river that you're going to see it. And I said, it's not going to be the, the battles that you think that it's all oh, it's Turkey and all of them and everything. No, 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 no. It's going to be... It's going to be these fallen angels, and it's going to be the battle is going to come against us. He's given power to wage war with you. And he deceives them to dwell on the earth by the means of the miracles which he had. Verse 14 we're in now. Saying to them to dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Nobody's made that image yet. But you've already got the mark, right? Nonsense. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You know, my wife brought out a very interesting point. She said, if the mandate that they stick in your arm is supposed to be the mark, why are they dying? You're supposed to live if you get the mark. It's the ones that don't go along and, then, and we haven't got to the mark, actually. We're just talking about if you don't worship the image of the beast, you should be killed. But yet, it's the ones taking the mandate that are dying. And he calls all, both small, great, rich, and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads. And then no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is the wisdom. Let him that understands count the number of the beast. It is the number of a man. His number is 603 score and 6. Just remember, they know the biblical prophecies as well. And that's one thing we talk about in these private meetings. They're also working to make it look like prophecy is being fulfilled. That's why they want you to think this mandate is the mark when it's not. But there's going to be one rising up out of the sea. Could it be that beast right there on the left? I don't know. I don't really know. The one that rises up out of the earth. Could that be Nimrod? Could that be the reptilians? Which the reptilians and the serpent and the leviathan, all this. I don't know the answers to all of that. But one thing I do know. That hour is very, very fast upon us. I see I have Isaiah mentioned here as well. Let's just look at that one. In that day, the Lord, with his sword and great strong sword, will punish Leviathan, the slant serpent. Leviathan, the torturous serpent. And he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. So that final showdown is coming. And I know that this is probably completely off the rocker for everybody that's probably never thought of these things before. But things are, are going to heat up. Oh, by the way, uh, real quick, I just throw this in here for you. Um, I am seeing a lot, a lot of the, the torrent, I think that's what they call it, the, the meteorite showers and stuff, getting all kinds of images coming in here, people that are sending things to me and stuff. Uh, there's one here, broad daylight. I, I was told, though, that 80%, here it comes, right side of the screen, there it is, there you go, there it is. 80% uh, of the meteorites are going to hit the oceans, the one here for October, that is. Okay, so I just want to make sure you're aware of that. Uh, there, but there's just, like I said, there's a lot of them being seen right now. This is just from one day. There are different places going on. Um, this one here. Now, these ones where they come in really slow, I don't think they're actually meteorites on those. I'll tell you what I think that is. 
So I have seen one suggestion that it's fragments of like metals and stuff uh, and uh, things of that nature there. They do use uh, rail guns on a spaceship that we have in space there, uh, traveling not far, close to the Earth here, uh, to actually hit these things. I wondered if fragments from that is what these slower things are. That's, again, just a thought. I don't know the answer to that. Another one here uh, over in Louisville, Kentucky, um, 12.45 a.m., somebody caught. And, you know, it's hard to catch these things on camera as well. You know, this thing is just, it's just the way they come in. Um, Janice County, that may be Kentucky, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so a lot of, a lot of uptick in seeing these things go on. There's been sonic booms happening as a result of these as well, also creating uh, earthquakes uh, from some that are coming in that are so big. And uh, so they are starting to, to heat up now. And from what I understand, all the way, all the way through March is what we're gonna really be dealing with this on but especially late November, December. That's supposed to be the big issues there. Uh, but, and I haven't got any updates yet on the three that are supposed to impact Earth that are very big, but uh, I, I, uh, I know they're continuing to try to break those up. They've been using rail guns on them and uh, to try to break them up, but the density has just been impossible for them to break them up thus far. Doesn't mean that they won't. So let's pray that they do and that we don't get such devastating impacts. Uh, anyway, Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. God bless you.